Target, Saitse. During the advance on Rome, enemy transportation facilities are harassed from the air. This A-36, with a wing-mounted camera, dives on a roadblock from 6,000 feet, releases two 500-pound bombs, and pulls out at 1,500 feet, strafing during the dive. The target area is obscured by dust from previous bomb bursts. Target, motor transport near Velaitre. Strafing from an altitude of 500 feet, A-36 fighter bombers destroy 40 enemy motor transport confirmed and 36 damaged. Target, highway north of Rome. A-36s on an armed reconnaissance mission shoot up a truck convoy. On another mission in the Rome area near the mouth of the Tiber, the fighter bombers again attack enemy motor transport and leave several trucks in flames. Target, motor transport near Castellana. Each plane in the formation carries two 500-pound bombs and straps during the run. Target, the Vagata Bridge, southwest of Bologna. Two waves of Mitchells, based on Corsica, aim their bomb loads at the bridge over the Reno River on one of the main rail lines linking southern Italy with the north. Target, Genoa Harbor. Mitchells carrying 500-pound bombs raid the Genoa dock area without fighter escort. Black over the target is moderate but extremely accurate. We suffer no losses. Hits are scored on the docks and shipping in the harbor is damaged. Target, Pavia. On May 24th, our tactical air force struck Pavia. No flak or fighters are encountered. Broken clouds interfered with visibility. Target, Buzz Krupa, Yugoslavia. German troops had occupied the town, forcing the partisans to take up positions in the outskirts. Liberators, based in Italy, dropped 40 100-pound general-purpose bombs each. The bombing run is made at an altitude of 15,000 feet. In the first formation, about two-thirds of the bombs cover the left of the target. Bombs of the second formation hit the end of the town. Near misses are scored on the bridge. Smoke of the bombing is visible 30 to 40 miles away. Target, Banja Luka, Yugoslavia. On May 29th, selective bombing is used by B-24s to destroy another German-occupied town. Flak is encountered over the target. On this one day, several other Yugoslavian towns containing concentrations of German troops are attacked from the air to aid the partisan army. 290 Liberators, escorted by 90 Lightnings, release 540 tons of bombs over enemy targets in Yugoslavia in one day's operation.
a base on Los Negros Island in the Admiralties, a jungle patrol sets out for adjacent Manus Island, accompanied by an officer and two enlisted men of the 6th Combat Camera Unit. Starting from cavalry headquarters at Drobwe on the south coast, they wade ashore at Paley Village. The combat cameramen are as heavily armed as the rest of the patrol. They march through heavy jungles and deep mangrove swamp. Two hours out, the point man killed five Japs, caught by surprise in the center of the trail. Our troops cautiously close in on a Jap hut. Inside, they find nine dead Japs killed the previous day by another patrol. On one of the bodies are found an American fountain pen and cigarette case. They return to Drobwe to spend the night. Next day, they hike to the Ubi River on a three-day patrol. The men board outrigger canoes manned by friendly natives who take them up the Ubi for two hours to the mouth of the river. Alert for snipers and alligators, the men stand or kneel in a circle on the canoe platform, guns facing in all directions. Four Japs washing clothes in the river were fired at from the canoes, but it was impossible to verify the results. The patrol pushes on through a tropical downpour. They wade ashore through mud and press on into the jungle. It's estimated that there are about 250 Japs on this part of the island. The patrol camps at Bakanu. Shelter halves are raised and the men try to dry their clothing and equipment. Machine guns cover all approaches to the camp, and men not on guard duty relax. The next morning, the patrol continues in the rain. At 1100 hours, a large concentration of the enemy is discovered. 17 are killed, and a single survivor, a sergeant major, is captured. He's the only prisoner taken during this patrol. 47 Japs were killed. Crossing the Watani River on their way out of the jungle, the men hold their weapons high. Two snipers who fired on the patrol were killed at this point. The prisoner, beginning to weaken, stumbles in the current. At the next stop for rations, the prisoner collapses and has to be carried on an improvised litter for the rest of the journey. This is difficult through Jap-infested jungle and seven miles of mangrove swamps. It's necessary to give the prisoner frequent doses of atabrine through the night. By morning, he's improved sufficiently so that it's apparent he would survive the trip out. The stretcher is loaded on an outrigger to be taken downstream where the patrol will transfer to an LCM. These are some trophies of a successful patrol. The prisoner, responding to treatment, is able to sit up in the LCM as the patrol heads for home. At Red Beach on Los Negros Island, the Japanese sergeant major is conducted through the camp and turned over to the intelligence officer for interrogation. Finished with clean clothing, the prisoner is placed in the regular stockade. On the afternoon of April 12th, a storm of gale proportions developed at the Tezgan Air Base, India, causing considerable damage to gliders and aircraft tied down in the dispersal areas. The first phase, including heavy rain and light hail, passed over Kumatal at about 1,730 hours, with a top wind velocity of 17 miles an hour. At 1,845 hours, heavy rain started again. 
The wind at Tezgon, it's estimated, reached a maximum velocity of 35 miles an hour with possible isolated gusts ranging from 50 to 60 miles an hour. Gliders and planes were torn from their moorings and blown all over the field. Several TG-5 gliders were blown up into trees. Another was carried by the force of the wind up onto the roof of a hut. At the Dinjan Air Base in Upper Assam, India, the station dispensary ambulance drives out on the runway to treat an injured gunner. He's suffering from severe shock as a result of pain and hemorrhage. Morphine is administered and oxygen is also given by means of this portable oxygen apparatus, which was developed and built from standard parts at the Dinjan dispensary because of the unavailability of oxygen cylinders. A standard oxygen mask type A8A is placed on the face and the flow of oxygen is adjusted to the needs of the patient by a type A8A regulator valve. A type G1 supply tank is mounted in a carrying case. Pressure in the tank is 400 pounds. The advantage of the low pressure tank is that it can be refilled at any airfield. Satisfactory results have been obtained from this apparatus which consists of an oxygen supply cylinder assembly, oxygen flow tubing, oxygen flow regulator, and filler valve. Target, Mulhouse. In the campaign to disrupt rail communications in France, the marshalling yards at Mulhouse were attacked several times during May. Liberators, escorted by lightnings, thunderbolts, and mustangs, made this raid on the 11th. An ME 109 is shot down by a P-47. The pilot can be seen parachuting down. The freight yards here at Mulhouse and at nearby Belfort and Epinal were hit on the same day with fair results. Mulhouse freight yards are attacked again on May 25th. 350 tons of bombs are dropped by formations of 135 heavy bombers. On this raid, the engine roundhouse, the coaling plant and locomotive shed are damaged and many hits are scored on the tracks.
The air campaign against German installations in France continues. Liberators of the 8th Air Force pass over surface vessels bound for France and fly over the invasion coast six days after D-Day. This smoking target has just been bombed by another group. The objectives of this attack are an airfield and railroad bridges outside of Conche. Hits are scored in the target area. The target of the day for these A-20s of the 9th Air Force is Lisay, a village on the west coast of the Norman Peninsula, 30 miles south of Cherbourg. The highway and railroad bridges are bombed. Another group of Havocs, striking about 75 miles south of Cherbourg, attack Saint-Hilaire. The railroad bridge under attack is the main line to enemy-occupied Cherbourg. Marshalling yards are the target of a third group of A-20s. Many rail yards between the Seine and the Belgian border were bombed during the second week after invasion. Ninth Air Force Marauders, escorted by P-47s based on a new strip in Normandy, set out to destroy a Nazi petrol dump near Valonia, about 13 miles south of Cherbourg. German tanks and motorized vehicles use this petrol dump for refueling. Gunsight aiming point cameras record fighter activity over Europe on D-Day. Transportation facilities are attacked to hamper enemy communications. Motor transport is shot up. trains. Ammunition truck is caught. An enemy command car.
The jackpot. 